Okay, well, I'm going to. Good evening. It is six o'clock and I call this special called meeting on June 26, 2024 to order. Um, Councilman Price, will you lead us in the invocation and pledge of allegiance? Public comments, I don't have any public comment cards. We'll have another session of public comment at the end of the meeting, should anyone want to address us. Um, before we get to the public hearing, we have a scout here. Would you like to stand up and introduce yourself? Tell us what troop you're from and what badge you're working on. Six, nine, one, Thank you for being here. And scouts provide a lot of benefits to both the participants and to our community. With that, we will have a presentation and a public hearing. Ms. Robinson, whenever you're ready. Good evening, Mayor, members of council. Um, I'm Delisha Robinson, the Assistant Finance Director here at the City of Dunwoody. Uh, this month will uh, be my first year, full year here with the city. So tonight I'm here to present the first public hearing for the 2024 military adoption. After the presentation, we'll open the floor for public comment and for counsel. So state law requires the city of Dunwoody to hold three public hearings to approve this year's millage rate. Even though the millage rate citywide will remain at 3.04 mills, the same rate as 2022 and 2023. The rate for 2024 will also include a one mill reduction for all homestead properties. Also, around 84% 84, 84 of residential houses in the city of Dunwoody have applied for and qualified for a permanent freeze of their home's value for tax purposes. So if qualified, no matter what, city taxes will stay the same. So to give some background and a timeline of events, on October 30th, 2023, the 2024 budget was approved by city council. Within the budget, 11.3 million is the projected tax revenue from property taxes, which is a third of the total general fund revenue. On May 24, 2024, the city received the tax digest, which is the appraised value of all properties here in the city of Dunwoody by the Board of Tax Assessors. The values approved by the Board of Tax Assessors requires three public hearings. All three hearings will be held here at the City of Dunwoody City Hall. Tonight's public hearing is the first, followed by a hearing tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. and the final hearing on Monday, July 8th at 6 p.m. where we will request council to consider and adopt the military. So this graph shows the City of Dunwoody total digest value for 2009 to present. So despite the digest growing 3.44% this year, calculations required by state law take into account reassessments. So the city has to say, this is an increase above the rollback rate of 5.81%. So throughout the years, the law on advertising millage rates has caused confusion. This may be the last year this law will be in effect uh, below are the percentage changes for this year. So as mentioned in the previous slide, the year over year net digest grew through 0.44%. However, state law requires the city of, to advertise a tax increase of 5.81%. The state calls this the percentage, the rollback grew. It's also worth mentioning again that the city of Dunwoody has assisted homeowners by instilling a property assessment freeze Homestead properties that qualify for this freeze will see no increase in their 2024 taxes. The biggest increase that affects us in 
is the property tax freeze. The year-over-year -year property tax freeze grew 25.29%. The net commercial digest by itself grew 8.24%, which is something the city is always watching, while the net residential digest shrank 2.74%. And this can happen due to tax free in one meal, so it'll occasionally be a small shrinkage. So based on the values from the Board of Tax Assessors, less poss possible loss on appeals and collections, the estimated revenue for 2024 will now be 11.2 mil. This slight decrease represents 0.3% change in the overall revenue projection of the general fund, 3.46 mil, 34.6 mil. So in the next two slides, we just want to share some additional information. So this graph shows the year-over-year -year percentage change in net digest for the city of Dunwoody. As you can see, the prior three years show a robust change. This year, we're at 3.44%. Even though the rate of growth is decreasing, the digest Dunwoody is still a positive number. This graph shows the digest by category, which separates commercial and residential. The orange line on this graph represents commercial values. The blue line represents residential values. So when you look at this by category, the net commercial values are the largest share of growth historically. So we also would like to share some additional information on House Bill 581. Voters in Georgia will be asked to approve a statewide floating homestead exemption in November. If passed, all homesteaded values will be frozen to properties are sold, except for the rate of inflation. Dunwoody's freeze, however, is more restrictive and does not allow for inflationary increases. So whether or not the state law passes, Dunwoody's law will still be in effect. So the Staff recommends adoption of a rate of 3.04 mills at the July 8th meeting after the three public hearings and adjust the revenue accordingly. That concludes the 2024 military rate presentation. And thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, now we will open the public hearing. Um, each side can have up to 10 minutes. So if you would like to speak against us maintaining the millage rate at 3.04, please join us up here. If you're speaking against us maintaining it, if you're speaking, uh, Mr. Hickey, are you coming to speak against it? Okay, come on up. I just want to make sure you weren't making your way to the front for the four. Thank you, ma'am. I am Robert Hickey, a citizen of Dunwoody for almost 50 years. Mm -hmm. I stand tonight as an interested, involved, and concerned Dunwoody citizen. Just as I have voiced my opinion at many, many similar public hearings over the years on property taxes. I hereby request that the council reject the proposed millage rate increase and instead roll back the rate to 2.873 mills or a, le or a level that would be revenue neutral to the city. I love our city. It's the best place in Georgia and the USA to live, work, and play. It is mostly safe, mostly convenient to the necessities, amenities, and places we want to go, and Dunwoody is affordable and friendly. But many of the factors that have made Dunwoody great are changing to what I consider to the negative. Case in point, the proposed property tax rate would be burdensome to a large segment of citizens who cannot afford higher property taxes, senior citizens, retirees, and citizens living in poverty. Apartment rentals are also determined by property taxes. As much as 20% of the city population, according to data presented by the census and in city documents are in these categories. This economy with inflation rates that outpace the cost of living for many is already weary and burdensome to as many as 10,000 of our fellow citizens in Dunwoody. Ten, it's actually more than 10,000 with a 20% rate. 10,000 people in Dunwoody will have issues living with this tax increase. 
we became a city to control our lives. And people have relocated and remained here for this reason. I have attended public hearings on the city millage rate for property taxes for most of the 15 years our city has been a city. The, cities of, the citizens of Dunwoody voted overwhelmingly to be independent of DeKalb County for a number of reasons. But the most important reason was because county leadership did not listen to citizens' concerns about their needs. DeKalb County only wanted our tax dollars. After becoming an independent city, our elected leaders listened to citizens for many years and started the process of filling out our needs, including a focus on crime and public safety and traffic congestion, which were the top concerns in the 2023 survey of citizens that was commissioned by the city of Dunwoody. Our current city officials, from whom we voted to represent our wants and needs, appear to have turned deaf ears to these concerns in the interest of what? Wider 12-foot trails, bike lanes on our already congested streets. In 2023, Dunwoody citizens voted overwhelmingly no, 57% to 43%, against 12-foot wide trails and bloated park construction and defeated the $60 million bond referendum. During five regular council meetings so far this year, the council has taken various actions that would result in the city spending $39,783,540 on trails. Don't you listen? November, we voted 57 to 43 against trails. There was so much new spending that a staff in a mem memorandum stated some projects in the five-year plan may have to be deferred if the federal money is received. Well, some, some regards, I'd like for deferral of all of them, but some of them will have to be deferred. A trail on North Shalliford was one of these projects, and this trail was not even in the details of the $60 million bond referendum. I guess our concern about substituted product, projects was very valid, and our fellow citizens agreed. Our city has a spending problem, not a property tax revenue problem. Total city spending in 2010, our first year to city, was slightly over 16, almost 17 million. In 2020, pre-pandemic, the city spent 37.5 million, a 162% increase from our first year as a city. Budgeted spending for this year, 2024, is $60,812,751, a 360% increase over our base year. In summary, our elected leaders, you, need to return to listening. Dunwoody citizens do not want trails as exhibited by the 57 to 43% defeat of the $60 million bond referendum. Our city needs to operate more efficiently, reduce unintended, unneeded operations, listen to citizen voters, and focus on needs. I object to the 3.04 millage rate. Thank you for your time tonight, listening to me as an interested, involved, and concerned Dunwoody citizen. Thank you. Thank you. Sharon, how much time is left for no? All right, is any, we have four minutes remaining on the no side. If anybody would like to speak on the no side, um, you four minutes. Seeing no one, I open the floor for 10 minutes on maintaining, if you're for maintaining the 3.04 millage rate. All right, seeing no one, um, unless there's an objection, I close the public hearing. Um, and now we can have council discussion and questions. Uh, if Ms. Robinson wants to come back, does anybody, she approaches, uh-huh. Thank you for your presentation. Um, can you, like, we, I understand our budget and I look at our budget book and stuff. Can you, it's not part of your presentation, but can you kind of talk about the difference of what types of budgets we have? There's an operating budget, 
So this is this is coming up uh, and different funding sources, right? So this is a, pro we're focusing on the millage rate and the property tax. And I think we kind of want to level set to the public that there's other sources of income that the city has that we budget for and it's used for different things. So um, could we just have a, just a, a quick 101 for the greater public to level set the property tax revenue and where that goes and generally speaking, what we do with that property tax revenue right just the big yeah right because we're talking about the millage rate it's about property tax just kind of level setting because the, there's some some conversation here about capital projects okay so property taxes that's our largest income for the city of Dunwoody and so that goes towards a large range of the projects here and here at the city of Dunwoody and a lot of operating expenses here as well um so it's definitely something that we look at and manage we also have other forms of revenue that we look at as well but property tax is definitely the largest and it definitely is what we use the most to cover most projects here both operating okay um councilman seconder i'll help a little bit on this uh because i kind of know what you're hitting at uh, the property taxes that come into the city of Dunwoody go strictly into the general fund. And the largest department in the general fund, one third of it is now the police department. So we get about 11 to $12 million of property taxes. And the largest department that goes to in discretionary funding, it goes to police. The next two are parks and public works. So the things that are built, so when we're talking capital projects and trails, those are generally done with SPLOST and or federal money. They're not used with property tax money, doesn't go towards that. It tends to be the SPLOST side of the equation. So even changing the millage rate would not affect those projects. It would actually affect departments like the police. And and what's the, just the police budget approximate? What's that number about? I don't want to put you on the spot. The annual? Uh, it's 11 or 12 million at this current time out of a $33 million general fund. It's about a third of the general fund budget. So so basically all of the, imagine just us, just from the property tax, that's paying for the police department. All right, thank you. I have a question um, about revenue. So our digest grew a tiny amount, relatively speaking, but our estimate for revenue is down about $100,000. Is that because we had estimated more growth or because of the... Combination of two things. One is looking at trends. It grew right. a little bit less right. than ha has been. The past three right. years, we've been running at right. about seven. Right. It ran at about four. We do budget that conservatively. Even that's the one that we do the most. The other thing we got a little bit more aggressive on on purpose with the numbers we got back is the rate of appeals are higher and a lot are still ongoing. So we actually kind of took away a little bit. This is for us to go a realistic figure that would come in this year. So we're, we're, we're narrow casting it, but that's the two factors. And as I understand it, many people who filed appeals in 23 have still not heard, like they haven't had their hearings. Uh, that, that's correct. And I've got the most recent numbers, but I don't remember them all. Okay. Time. Can you remind me please of the about the average what a homeowner in Dunwoody with a homestead exemption and a freeze pays if yearly. I had my tax calculator up I could okay. do it it's in the ad okay. it's actually in the crier and I would have to pull it up okay so the ad in the crier is somewhat confusing to people because it says the average six hundred thousand dollar home will see an eighteen dollar increase in their city taxes but that is not true for people who have the homestead exemption, the freeze, correct? Correct. We're not for city taxes. Yes, we are not allowed to apply the freeze in the advertisement. Right. In a real bill, that house would stay frozen year over year. Right. And the same, I believe, is true. The DeKalb County today announced they're not raising the millage rate. They're uh, not raising their aggregate. Their rate. aggregate millage rate. Um, the school system announced Monday that they're lowering their millage rate by a small amount. But if your house value increased, just as a reminder, the school system does not have a freeze. And so for many Dunwoody residents, easily 70 to 80% of their property tax bill is the school system, correct? You're correct. Right. 
In 2020, do you recall what our starting salary was for police officers? Um, they're like, it's quiz day. Um, right, for about 40,000 sound about right. Sounds about right. And what is it right now? About 60, right? Yeah. I mean, we just increased it to 60, 60 for someone with no, and we rarely. No degree. No degree. degree. High school. 21 years old, yeah. no degree high school. And we rarely hire people mm -hmm. that fall. Correct, Eric? Usually their chief is back there shaking raising his hand. Okay. Thank you. Um, I just want to take a per personal point of privilege because Mr. Hickey touched on something that I'm very passionate about. So in DeKalb, we have the host, which is the homestead. Um, it's the, it's property tax relief for only homeowners. Whereas many, all the other Metro counties, I believe, and many other counties across the state have something called the LOST, which is the local option sales tax. And that sales tax is used to provide relief for all properties in the county that has those sales taxes. You know, the host was adopted a long time ago. It's only in DeKalb and Rockdale. It's a, a rare thing. It's actually used as a threat by counties over cities when they have their loss negotiations, the counties will say, if you don't cooperate, we're going to have a host. So it, it, it's, it's a challenge. So it would not have been my first pick. So with that, um, the public hearing, a very close public hearing, we've had discussion. We will be back here at eight o'clock tomorrow morning to do the same thing. And um, we have a consent agenda. Move to approve. Move by Joe. Second. Second by Rob. Any discussion or questions? Seeing none, I call the question. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed, say no. Um, we have public comments. Anyone like to make a public comment? We'll have three minutes. Seeing none, um, I need a, uh, we have no executive session. I need a motion to adjourn. So moved by Catherine. Second by Rob, all in favor, we stand adjourned. See you in the morning.